Okay, so yesterday we were learning about the meaning of climbing the ladder. Why is there a need to climb a ladder? We said that the top of the ladder in a personal level means to reveal the godliness in your soul. The four letters of God's name, the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, are, so to speak, at the top of the ladder in ourselves, to reveal the godliness in ourselves. And why do we need to climb the ladder? The reason we need to climb the ladder is because we're not in touch with our soul. And that gives us a little insight to what's going on with our with our soul, or more accurately, the higher part of our soul. When, when, there's the, um, when there's an announcement in heaven, everyone should return to God, everyone should do tshuva. So the soul in heaven sees this and hears this. But what happens over here in this world? Do we hear this? Do we see this? So more often than not, we don't. And the reason we don't is because of weather uh, isn't so good between here and our soul in heaven. There are special days, it says in other discourses about a time of divine grace and mercy, when it's Rosh Hashanah, it's Yom Kippur, it's Yom Shvat, it's a special day. So then we're in touch, we feel, we sense the, uh, the, the, the this, we want to be closer to God. Um, but the Rebbe mentioned, as we concluded yesterday, there are certain things you could do to uh, push away the clouds. The, the Hasidic masters, when they needed to sanctify the moon, what they do? If it was a cloudy day, they took some of the Hasidic masters, like a Meir Premishlan famously, took out his handkerchief, and he moved away the clouds, and then he was all of a sudden able to uh, see the moon. Our Rebbe, a similar thing happened. The Rebbe was, came out to, do, to sanctify the moon, and it was, there was too many clouds. The Rebbe said the story, and they asked if anyone could do this. I said the story about a mayor. Our mayor said that Moshe have been also in the time the Jewish people were in the desert, how they sanctified the moon. There were the clouds, um, uh, the clouds covering the Jewish people's uh, camp. And so the mayor Premishan said that Moshe had moved away the clouds with a handkerchief. Can anyone, can anyone do this? Rebbe asked. So, um, so someone said the Rebbe should do this. And then the Rebbe didn't respond, but he smiled. He said, my, my thing is just to say the story. And then he went into his um, I think we went to his mother, mother's, mother's apartment, Sina Kavdala, and then he came back, and the moon had appeared. Uh, so, but what do you, what you need to do if you want to get in touch with your soul? What, what's, what's a way to clear the clouds from your soul and to get to hear what's going on in your soul? So the previous I mentions, um, the most of the time, um, I think, I mean, I wouldn't know, but is this an amazing thing? It says in this course. This course, I wonder if this says in other, others. Is this the brand new discourse that we just that we just printed? He says that most of the time, this is achieved by effort in doing a mitzvah, and especially effort in the realm of helping many people study Torah. And specifically, he says when you help another Jew come closer to God. There's a, there's a verse that the Rebbe quotes here: "Lohitz Yakam Mizelo." When you take something beautiful out of something ugly, then then kifitia, uh, the Talmud says, then God will fulfill whatever you this, you say. If in, even if God has a decree and you have a decree the opposite, God will fulfill your decree and he'll on all his. So that's the power of, of bringing other Jew closer to Hashem. So so ordinarily the point of the discourse is ordinarily we we're not in touch. We don't feel. And that's why there's a reason to climb the ladder. There are both mentions we learned yesterday. There's another way to um, inspire Teshuvah, and that's by actually doing this artificially, by thinking about why you're running, where are you going, and how we uh, justify all the things that we're involved in, and the things of real substance we don't, um, we don't pay attention to, and that uh, causes a person to really feel contrite about where he is. So, but regardless, the um, the uh, there's, there is interference between the soul and the body and the soul in heaven, and that is the reason why there's a need to um, to uh, uh, do something to make the weather better. Let's continue. When you do make an effort to um, do a mitzvah, especially help people try to study Torah and help another Jew come closer to God. 
then you could feel in your, the soul, which is in your body, those voices that Hashem is saying to do to shoot to return to Him. You feel suddenly this, this inspiration, you want to be closer. You don't know why you feel this inspiration, but that's where it's coming from. This good deed that you have done, it breaks the concealment of the body and the animal soul that hides the light of the soul. The deed that you've done has, bro- has broken the concealment. Sounds very similar to, um, to the splitting of the Reed Sea. The splitting of the Reed Sea um, is a message about our lives. It's not like just a story. You're in a situation and you don't know how to get out of the situation. It's impossible. And, uh, and then Hashem just suddenly, He splits the sea on a personal level. What that means is Hashem gives us the ability to, uh, to, to, to find Hashem. To look for the uh, the the MS, the truth of the situation. So that's what this guy is achieving by by his effort to do this mitzvah. He's he's breaking the concealment. He's splitting the Reed Sea on a personal level, and he's he's, he's hearing his soul. It says in the Torah, he devises means so that the one who is cast aside should not be. Chasid Elyon who. It is a kindness of the one above, the kindness of the supernal one. Even if someone is in a state of nidach, he is cast aside. He is looking at him externally. He is not into it. He is cast aside. Nevertheless, God devises means that he should not be pushed aside. As the Talmud says, is the, the wicked are full of regret. That even though this guy is, is not into it at all, yet he has these thoughts, I want to be closer. And how does this happen? Where do these thoughts come from? This happens through many different means that the cause of all causes makes happen all kinds of strange things that he does. Even this person who is cast aside, not only should he not be cast aside, but he should be inspired to come closer to Hashem. That's a result of the means that Hashem devises that he should have this inspiration. I was thinking now about um, Rabbi Shalom Bear Lipsker in Florida. He, um, this man who was had a serious relationship with a non Jewish woman. And Rabbi Lipsker encouraged him to keep one mitzvah. The mitzvah was to put on film every day. But where is he going to put on film? So he put on film in the bathroom. And one day, his girlfriend walks in the bathroom and sees him wearing the film. And she immediately realized this was a challenge to her throne. <laughs> and she, she said, either you throw it in the toilet right now, or I'm leaving. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't throw it in the toilet. And he realized who he was, and it wasn't. It's not, it wasn't all. Um, it's, it's a more complicated story, but that was that was the uh, Hashem ma- makes devises means a person who is externally totally detached to come back. So not only should he not be detached, but yiskarev yashal should be closer and come close to Hashem. The truth is that even wicked people do not want at all to be separate from Hashem. The reason why a person does a sin is because of the spirit of foolishness that covers the truth. It makes him think that he's still maintaining his Jewishness as he was before. This, this line that we just learned is in the discourse of Basil Lagani, in the previous Shabbos discourse that he gave to be studied on the day of his passing on Yushvat, um, the, the, the same line is in that discourse. There's a ruach shtus, the spirit of foolishness, that makes a person desensitized to his soul, so that he doesn't feel that he's that there's anything significant about the act that he is doing. And he, what he says to himself, interestingly, is it doesn't. It's not that the relationship doesn't matter. It's that if this doesn't affect the relationship. He, it, he says to himself, "Well, st- I'm still a good Jew the way it was before. This doesn't affect the relationship." So the truth is, it does. It's not. It's not real. But um, he says to himself in his mind, 
in his heart, this doesn't affect the relationship. This doesn't matter. In the Bust of the Gani Maimer, the previous Sheba gives the analogy of an animal, that an animal who walks in the street it doesn't differentiate between walking on a child and walking on, uh, on the pavement. In a similar way, he says there are some people which are so desensitized to their Judaism that they, they choose different paths in keeping Judaism. They say, this thing I'm going to keep, this thing I'm not going to keep. And they don't realize that, there's, that the things that they are, that they, they, these things do matter. That by not doing a mitzvah, Rahman al you're separating yourself from Hashem. By doing an Aveira, you're cutting yourself off. That, it's, that's real. And the, the animal soul is what seduces us and says to us, it doesn't matter. It's okay. You're still a good Jew. So, that was going to um, uh, continue this, this theme and show that this doesn't just exist as he does in the Basel Ghani Maimer with people who reject Judaism re- or they choose different, choose different paths in Judaism say, this is my mitzvah, this is not my mitzvah. But this also exists in more subtle ways. Continues that. This paradigm that he says to himself, that he says, I'm still a good Jew, this paradigm exists in a more subtle form, and it even exists in the most subtle form. Behind this means, even someone who is perfect externally in his performance of Torah mitzvahs, he could also find himself saying this thing and say that I am the way I was before. Okay, Emma is saying it, Cain, but the truth is it's not that way. It's not that way that things you're doing don't affect the relationship. They do. It says in a Pasuk, he stands on the he stands on a not good path he does not despise evil. So, Chassidus explains what causes a person to go on a not good path by him saying to himself, it doesn't matter, it's not, it's, evil isn't so bad, it's not so bad to do an Avir. It does, it, evil isn't so bad, that paradigm, it's not so bad, that, that is the step of the not good path. That's, if you want a sign that you're on a not good path, it's when you say, it doesn't matter so much. Here, uh, Dr. Breston says right Pico here. Boulevard, it says Olympic Boulevard. You want to know if you're not on the right path, it's, it doesn't matter. The, it doesn't matter is the not good street. You don't want to go on the not good street. That, that's the. Not even in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the sign that you're going down the one way street the wrong way. You're, go, you're going to crash. We see by many people who are Bali Tsura. Bali Tsura. In the Chassidic lexicon, means people who are, who are real servants of God, who, who their soul shines in them, that they have a tzior, they have a, a uh, they look like they're doing the right, they look like, like, like holy people, really, not just externally. They're bali tzura. Bali tzura means their tzura means their soul is, is, is shining in them in many ways. And yet, they have time for all worldly things, they have time for all mundane things, they set aside time for studying Torah that's difficult, difficult for them. And when they do set a time to study Torah, most of the time, that time they set aside doesn't happen. They set aside a time. First of all, it's like a man who the fast about Jews in Odessa. He said, Jews in Odessa, he says, they have a hard time promising. They never promise Jews in Odessa. They can't promise. But if they promise, you know, for sure it's a lie. <laughs> so in a similar way Debbie says the Jew has uh, even though this person is in a, in a magnificent state in the service of Hashem in general but yet the world matters more and so, so he finds time to all worldly things when it comes to a matter of setting aside, aside time to study Torah so first of all he doesn't find time and if he finds a time most of the time that time gets pushed aside why is that because he's not the same way he was before. He thinks that doing various mistakes won't affect his Jewishness, won't affect his connection, but it does affect his connection. 
And because it affects his connection, it's now harder for him to make the same commitment to Judaism as he had, did before. He, there was a time he was able to set aside time to study Torah, he was able to keep it consistently. And the reason why it's harder now is because he's not the same way he was before. So, Deb is giving an example, which doesn't say this in the Basel Ghani Mimer, what it means, that he's, that, what the real truth is. The guy says to himself, I'm going to do this thing, it won't affect my Jewishness. So in the Basel Ghani Mimer, Deb just says, his soul gets cut off, and it does affect his soul, and he talks about the 613 strands, and our Bevera is a strand. But here the Rebbe says, what happens practically? Practically what happens as a result is, that you don't have the same resolve, you don't, have the, you don't have the same yardstick anymore about what's important and what's not important. And therefore you can't, it's harder for you to decide to commit yourself to doing the right thing, to study Torah in this analogy. And if you do make that decision, you don't have the the persistence. The reason you don't have the persistence is because it doesn't matter so much. And little by little, he leaves his spiritual standing. But he himself thinks, I'm still the same guy. He thinks I'm still the same guy. The truth is, he's not the same guy. He has changed. There's a beautiful teaching, a very beautiful, well, it's, it's, it's a touching teaching of the previous Rebbe about service of God. It goes like this. We, in, our, in our prayers on uh, Musaf, we say, Because of our sins, we were exiled from our land. And we were distanced, distanced from our soil. And we cannot ascend and see and pray and bow down before you. So the previous Rebbe says, Because of our sins, the word sins doesn't necessarily mean sins. Sins also means deficiencies. Because there's something missing. In other words, you miss doing chitas, let's say. Is that a sin? That is, you miss giving tzaka before davening. Is that a sin? You're missing something spiritual that you're a groove that you're into. Like the Rambam says, at the beginning of the downfall of an army is running away from the enemy. In some a spiritual sense, the previous Rebbe says that means the beginning of downfall spiritually is that you lose your groove. You have a certain thing you're doing. You have a certain, you have a certain thing. So it causes you, you would get exiled from your land. Your land means your desire. You lose your good desire to do the right thing. As he's saying over here, you don't want anymore the same way you wanted before. Your want is weaker. You're ex- you have it inside you, but you're exiled from it. When this al Masenu, and you become distant from your man, the man that's in you, the true man, the, the godly soul, you, you're far away from that guy. The Yuchem until you cannot go up. You, you, don't, you have no interest in, in getting better. No interest is getting better. You're getting far from the man. No interest is getting better. You hear what's going on. So he doesn't realize that the reason he got there was because of chata'enu, because of those little things. That doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Rabbi Shmuel Levitin used to say that connection to a tzaddik is like hair. It doesn't seem when you cut, you cut hair off and, and you won't feel it. And yet, when a person is drowning, sometimes the the best and only way to save the person is by grabbing their hair. So in a similar way, you may think that those little things we do, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But the MS is, the truth is, it does matter. And those things take us, so t- they, they, well, let's say in the positive way, the way to rebuild our good desire is by paying attention to the word, to, you know, all the things we think are <laughs> acceptable Averis. You know, these are, this, this is the, uh, this is the acceptable Gehenim, the acceptable Averis. Um, you know, some opinions say this is okay, like Yankel. You know, it's about Yankel. Yankel goes in the elevator in heaven. He says, Which way are we going? We're going to heaven. They arrive in some very ugly place. And he says, This is heaven. So the angel says, And it's according to some opinions. <laughs> some opinions say this is heaven. All right, we'll write along. Okay, so he himself thinks that he hasn't changed. Who bats in Ninma? He thinks he hasn't changed. But the truth is, he has changed. He's not the same way as he was before. And uh, let's try to get this to the next page in this, in this, this thing. If I would know how to use a Mac, let's see.
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just turn on the next page of my my safe. I can't move this on the uh, on the phone on the uh, computer. Okay, he thinks he's still the same way he was before. And so too is this true by a person who has cast aside Judaism already. He also thinks the same thing. So just like you think, oh, I didn't give Tzaka before davening, I'm still the same. The guy who has completely rejected Judaism and he is, he is externally cast aside, externally you would say he is not into this stuff, he's not religious, doesn't care about Judaism. That guy has a lot in common with the other guy who is just missing his Tzaka before davening. But just like that guy who has, is cast aside doesn't want to be separate from Hashem, so too this guy who is very religious and he is magnificent in his spirituality and he just has lost it. Uh, he has lost his drive because of these little mistakes. He also doesn't want to become, he doesn't want to be separate from Hashem either. And this is from the essence of the soul as above logic and reason. As Alter writes in chapter 19, he says that you always have that part of your soul in you that is innocent and pure, but by the wicked, says the Alter Rebbe, it's in a state of sleep. It's asleep. It's there, but it's asleep. And it doesn't have an effect on you, on the wicked, as long as you are obsessed with your mind in, 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 the, in the vanities of this world. As long as you're engrossed in the vanities of this world, so your soul is in a not-so-peaceful slumber. However, when that's your mind, your mind is engrossed in the, in the mundane and the unimportant, that's your mind. But when there's a challenge in faith, when someone says to you, in other words, that you should reject your belief in God, it's not talking about logical stuff anymore. He says, but do you believe in this? All of, or if you don't, if you accept this, or something will happen to you. All of a sudden, the neshama comes out. It's beyond logic and reason. And it touches the core of the soul. I just heard this story, um, I don't know if I share this with you, with a Jew named Rabzalman Yudkin. Rabzalman Yudkin, he was in um, Russia, and he was interrogated by the KGB. I told you a story, right? He was interrogated by the KGB. And the KGB officer, I told you. The KGB officer says to him, um, say, do you believe or not? If you say you believe, you're going to be thrown into this pit. The pit is full of mice. And, and he, he couldn't say I don't believe. He didn't want to get thrown in the pit. But how could he say I don't believe? I believe. He's thrown in the pit for days with the, with the, with the mice, with the rats, for days. So, that's not just Zaman Yudkin, not just a chassid, a prominent chassid. That is a Jew. A Jew, when it comes to a matter of faith, it's, it's, it's infinite. V'nog anav shechav touches the deepest part of the soul. So this is where we're going in the discourse. The Rebbe brought us to discover what is the Yud of the soul. The Yud of the soul is the chachma of the soul, is this power of utter devotion to Hashem that I, I do not want and I cannot in language of the Alter Rebbe, a Jew does not want and cannot sever his bond with Hashem. That is who a Jew is. So that comes to the fore, that's expressed when there's a challenge to our faith. Then it wakes up from its sleep, and with the godly power in this, in this part of our soul, it has an impact and it does something. So ordinarily, it could be asleep, but that's there. That, that part of our soul is there. And... Uh, as it says in Tanya, there is a way to trigger, um, as we'll learn later, to bring out this part of our soul, not just in, in a time when we're challenged in our faith, but that's who we are, that's the Yud, that's climbing the ladder and reaching the highest point of the ladder, the Yud, the deepest part of the soul. And God willing, we're going to learn Mishim tomorrow what the hay is and what the Vav is, what the hay, and this ladder hay is in our lives. That's climbing the ladder. L'chaim, l'chaim, a great day, and uh, don't forget... Tonight, tomorrow, you're supposed to write a letter to the Rebbe, write a pan, or to Shem. All right, Litro, have a great day, Kol Tov.